This is Wrestling World 247. We are here with former ECW World Champion and Triple Crown Champion, Mikey Whipwreck. How are you doing, Mikey? Jordan, how you doing, young man? I'm doing great. I'm going to ask everyone this question. Why did you choose wrestling? Because uh, I'm an idiot? <laughs> no, I don't know, man. I was watching as a kid. You know, I remember the first thing I remember actually watching. Uh, my brother would watch it uh, with the, uh, the Iron Sheik and Sergeant Slaughter in some boot camp match from Madison Square Garden. So uh, I watched that. Uh, I was kind of hooked. And then it kind of took off from there. You know, started watching guys like, uh, you know, The Rockers, uh, Randy Savage, Mick Foley, and everyone's favorite, The Ultimate Warrior. Kind of just took off from there. It kind of just seemed like a natural progression. Uh, I just enjoyed it. Started training. Uh, that was it. So I didn't really kind of choose it. Really, it kind of uh, obsessed my body, my brain. Well, that's gonna they connect to my next question. You started off doing ring crew for ECW. I did ring crew for one show before, and you know, it just it's hard setting up the ring and everything. But describe the experience setting up for a show. This is ECW. I do. I did an indie show once for ring crew, but this is describe setting up an ECW show during ring crew. Uh well, it cut off me because me at the ECW was kind of really like I had never even heard of it until I was actually at the show setting up the ring. I had like really like no idea. I'm like, oh, okay, ECW because I was up in uh, Long Island, so internet really didn't pop really too much by that point. So unless you're really into the independent stuff, you wouldn't have any clue about it. But um, you know, got there. Uh, the building was not hot yet because it was. <laughs> I think it was like winter time. I think it was maybe November, December. And uh, it's just cool, man. And then I was in there putting the ring up. I started to see all these guys walking in. You know, Shane Douglas, you know, Taz and Tommy Dreamer. I had known them from uh, Northeast Independence. Uh, you know, uh, who else was there? Paul Heyman was there. Jimmy Snuka was there. <laughs> Road Royal Hawk was there. Terry Funk, Kevin Sullivan. So all these guys got walking in. I'm like, oh, my God, this is like, uh, this is like a real deal. I like that literal beast where you get, uh, you know, most of the show was a bunch of people you've never heard of. Uh, you know, main eventing with like a Greg Valentine versus Bruce Beefcake or something. So it was it was definitely kind of cool. And I actually got to watch kind of how the TV aspect of things kind of got put together for a TV taping. So it was kind of neat. So it, it sucked. You know, it, it definitely as you know, it, it's not the not the glory job. Well, it, a job's a job. Oh man, we got we got some rain here. Hopefully, it doesn't interfere with anything. It probably won't. Um, but um, you know, you get the call, you debut. How did it go? Uh, well, it, it, it was kind of like a fluke thing. Uh, you know, me and my buddy Craig, we were kind of just doing high spots and backflips and stuff um, in the ring after we had it together. Uh, and then, you know, they, Paul Hammond goes, hey, do you want to wrestle? And I go, um, okay. Had no gear, you know, no boots, nothing. I wasn't even really ready. I mean, I was training with my buddy um, up where he was training to wrestle, but I was so small at the time, he didn't even take my money. He cleaned the gym. You know, after you guys are done, you can train for free. But okay. So I really had no no visions of grandeur actually getting into wrestling and making it a career. Uh, literally kind of just fell into it. So you have your first match. How much did you get paid after that match? Nothing. Oh. My, 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 my first TV, I, I think I wrestled uh, three, four matches maybe. I mean, it wasn't that many. But I, I, I ah, it had to be. I wrestled uh, Kevin Sullivan. Whether it's here, he, he, you know, you stand next to him in public, you know, he's a big guy. You know, but when you put him in there with the top guys in the WWE, he didn't look so big. Oh, I can I can relate to that. Like when they get that big push, right? Yeah, but even even but even that Sean Walton was not a big guy. You know, in, in general, everyday walk of life, he's a big guy. But like compared to me, you know, he, he, he's like a giant compared to me almost. You know, he's got to be a good six foot six what six two maybe, Sean. So back in 94, I was a little guy. And by a little guy, I was a little guy. You know, guys my size were not around <laughs> in 1994. Okay. At least uh, not my size to get any type of uh, push. So it was just uh, awesome. And it get, put, put, be put with Mick was just like crazy. 
Like, uh, <laughs> I look back and go, ah, man, that was like a great time. Uh, somebody asked me about it yesterday on Twitter, I think. Uh, What's your Twitter? I'll follow you. I'll write it down right now. Uh, Mikey underscore Whipwreck. There's other Mikey Whipwrecks out there. Why? I, I don't know. Because you're famous. Um, but yeah, Mikey Whipwreck wasn't available. So I had to put the underscore in between Mikey and Whipwreck. There's a lot of fans there. After all, you appeared on a trading card. Remember that? I remember that. How many did you sign for them? I, I talked to Billy Silverman about that. He said he signed like about a thousand copies. Well, yeah, we got, um, well, here's the thing. Um, I had quit put my notice in for WCW in August, end of August. And in like September, they sent me all these cards. I said, well, I already quit. I'm not, they're not paying me no more, so I'm not sending them back. How much did they pay you? For what? They, not the, they, just came, they just came from the mail FedEx one day. Just, uh, I Sign them. Said, yeah. Oh, great. So I started selling them. I sold them on, on the, you know, uh, on the shows I was doing, you know. Oh, really? Like 15, 20 bucks. And then they got kind of rare. And then for a while, you know, people asking me, oh, I want to buy one. I want to buy one. I want to buy one. I said, well, okay, well, I don't know. I'll give you 300. They go, I'll give you for a fucking baseball card. And they go, Mikey, they're rare. They're, they're, they're creative, but they never went out the pack. We got <laughs> Going, son of a bitch. I said, I threw most of these things away. So, you, I can't get one? <laughs> you can't get one, Joe. I don't have any left. Uh, maybe I'll just send, like, a little cue card through the mail, and, like, you can add the number 99 and everything, and it'll be cool. There you go. Wayne, the Wayne Gretzky of wrestling. The Wayne Gretzky of wrestling. Right? I'm Canadian. I have to add a twist to it. <laughs> well, hey, at least I got the reference. <laughs> um, I got a, a Wayne Gretzky story for you. Um, I was at the Ranger game, and he's, this is before the game, and he's, he's skating around, and he's right by the ice. So I'm down at the ice, and I'm pounding on the glass. Like, pounding like a motherfucker. Bam, bam. Wouldn't put me over. Wouldn't look at me nothing. I go, he's got to hear me. I'm pounding on him. Then I start pounding with my, uh, <laughs> with, with, like, my pen. And I'm pounding. So he's got to be hearing me on this glass. Nothing. Totally no soul me. So I go, son of a bitch. Wayne Gretzky. What a dick. Right? So, me and my friends, we start talking. He skates away. And we're like, man, that was really rude. Didn't even look at us. Didn't even, like, do it. Just, like, a little head nod. You know? Something. But, uh, so I'm talking to my friend. Next thing you know, bam, 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 pounding on the glass. I turned, it's, it's Gretzky. He throws two pucks over the, over the, over the glass uh, to us, so it's pretty cool. That's pounding like a... <laughs> man, I love... You, you still got it, man. You still got it. I got what? You, you, you could st why don't you, like, just go on an NYWC and tell that story. The fans would love it, like, and they can make a DVD of all your promos. That would be cool. Like, I have a tendency to tell some stories. I'll, I'll go on it. I love wrestling stories. I'm young, and the more stories I hear, the more I'm going to enjoy being involved with interviewing people in this business. Jordan, that wasn't even a wrestling story. That was a hockey story. I know, but you're sharing me a hockey story, but you share me wrestling stories too. I, I don't know. I like stories. You know you're, you're a story guy. I like that. I can appreciate that. I like stories myself. Except for WWE storylines right now. Some. I talk about that. You know, it gets me in a bad mood. Blow it out, blow it out, blow it out. By the time I finally need to get it fixed, I'm looking at knee replacement, so... Do what you gotta do, get things fixed the right way the first time. When you look back... At, when you look back at all of the time wrestling matches, even back when you did Ring Crew, from all the way up from there, are you proud of your wrestling career? Um, overall, yeah. Um, you know, people give me shit all the time because, oh, why did you go to WWE? Or why did you go... Well, I went to WCW. And I'm not, I'm not the politics type of guy. I'm, I'm not very good at politicking. So me going to WCW, it was nice as for a paycheck. Um, and, you know, my first match was really good with Kidman. But, you know, it, it was kind of not really going to go where it was going to go. And then I figured you had a guy like Bret Hart who was doing nothing. <laughs> I talked to him one time. And I figured, well, I shouldn't feel so bad. <laughs> I didn't do anything with Bret Hart either. Uh... And then, uh, yeah, I had to go to WWE because I just physically didn't feel up to it. I was working four or five days a week. Um, really wasn't. didn't seem all that good to me. Plus, I didn't really have the physique they like, if you know what I mean. Yeah, the look. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm proud of it. I, you know, I didn't, look, considering I didn't have any plans of doing anything in the business, 